Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, Wilderness Medicine. If you're new to the channel, we do wilderness medicine videos, gear reviews, uh, how to prevent you from getting injured, and just basically to educate you on zoonotic illnesses and injuries and how to stay safe when you're hunting, fishing, camping, anything in the outdoors. So if you like that, we really would appreciate subscribing, thumbs up and like it like you see on all the YouTube videos I'm doing the same thing thumbs up subscribe it helps it really does all right so this is a brief video and what we're going to do is we're summing up and we're done with the Lyme disease okay so this is going to be on does Lyme disease kill you can it kill you and yeah it can it's rare but it can happen and how that occurs is, is it basically gets by the medical team and it gets in the bloodstream, you get septic. It can cause endocarditis, which is an inflammation of the heart. Uh, there can be sudden death with that. You can have cardiac arrhythmias like tachycardia and other issues related to the heart. And that is how you basically die from Lyme disease. And like I said, it's very rare. The, the other thing that can happen, um, someone, a subscriber out there who evidently went through a really, really hard time with Lyme disease, uh, alerted me to the fact, and I should mention it, that it does cross the placenta. And that is not being contagious, but that is actually called chorioamnioitis. And that is when any bacteria crosses the placenta so you have, make it very brief, you have the chorion, which is the outer layer, then the amnion, and then the placenta. And it's filled with, obviously, you have the amniotic fluid. When that gets infected, that baby can be in trouble. So let's, here's the problem. So let's say you have a mom that's pregnant and she's out there camping with her husband and family and enjoying having a good time and she gets Lyme disease. And you know, sometimes pregnancies, they get rashes and so on and so forth, and it's missed. First of all, how do you even study that? You gotta get a group of women that are pregnant and you gotta find those individuals that have Lyme. It's very difficult to even study. So it's pretty understandable how it can get missed. So if, so word of caution, if you're pregnant and you love the outdoors or you have dogs and cats, it, it may be worthwhile. I mean. In order to die from Lyme, it's less than 1%. Chorioamnioitis, then the infection, is about 1% to 3%. That's not just with Lyme. The most common is E. coli, strep, malaria, any bacteria that goes missed and then crosses the placenta. Now, in 2008, there was a, a really good documentary called Under My Skin, uh, you can get it on Amazon Prime, it's free, and it's a pretty good documentary. But like all documentaries, like all books, there are positives and there are negatives. I watched this twice, and I'm here to let you know that Under My Skin was awesome in getting the word out in 2008 and saying, hey, this is being mess missed in the medical society. Pay attention. That year, the, uh, it may have been 2006, I am not sure when the Attorney General actually investigated the Infectious Disease Society of America, IDSA. When they did that, and the IDSA comes up with clinical treatment guidelines, how we practitioners are gonna treat patients. Well, they found there was somewhat of a conflict of interest and they helped, because of the Attorney General, actually politics and the government helped in this situation, surprise. And what they did is they actually helped change the treatment guidelines, and that was beneficial. So we are making progress, but docs and PAs and NPs are still missing Lyme disease. Brief note for my providers out there. You don't treat the test, you treat the patient. I had a patient just 10 days ago that comes in, a woman had a rash, she was camping with her husband up in northern Wisconsin, we did the Lyme disease test, but she had this kind of rash generalized all over her body, wasn't sure. Lyme test came back with only two positive bands. Well, according to CDC, that's a negative. She doesn't have Lyme. Clinical presentation, how she presented, and with only two bands, many people say, I'm not treating that, that's not Lyme disease. 
I'm treating it. You treat the patient, you don't treat the blood test. Treat the patient, don't treat the blood test. The blood test is nice because it's an adjunct. All right, we are done with Lyme. If you go back and look at my other videos, I've done signs and symptoms, what kind of ticks carry Lyme. They're all on the site. I'm gonna add a few of those at the end and down below. Next, coming up, we're gonna do some reviews. I know I got a lot of guys out there that are looking for some review videos. That's coming up and I'm about ready. My wife and I are heading out west, heading out to the Tetons again. I'm gonna shoot some videos out there. So follow me out to uh, the Tetons. All right, guys, keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. I'll see you next time. Take care.